Welcome back to Rat G, Ryan's All Things Geek, right here on 103.7 FM, Brock University Radio. Or you can be listening to us live online at cfbu.ca. All Things Geek. 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 All right, welcome back to another rousing edition of Every Year Rat People's G Lives Radio. Are Put in Danger When Drivers Don't Give the Right Away. As we give you a couple extra commercials there to start off the show. <laughs> so, yes, this is the Rat G Show, and it wouldn't start any other way. So welcome, folks. Uh, we've got ourselves a fine edition, as we do every week. I'm your host, Ryan Fleming, and uh, I put the Ryan in Ryan's All Things Geek. And this week, I'm joined with by my co-host, as I am every week, the one, the only, Mr. Green Jelly himself, Steve Lambert. Thank you, thank you. So, brother, Green Jelly this week. Green Jello, yeah. Uh, how was uh, the worst, the band that tries to be the worst band in the world, how was their concert? Last they week? lived up to their billing. <laughs> the worst band in the world. That is quite awesome. And, uh... There were some lovely photos of you up on stage with Green <laughs> Jelly wearing a little pig uh, mask. Yeah, I got to be part of the show. Uh, they, uh, I guess there's, you know, they, they were playing Taps in Niagara Falls, so there's probably not enough money around to go to hire nine <laughs> people in costume to dance around on stage. So they actually take volunteers. And uh, I wasn't one of the volunteers. I actually obtained the pig head while in the mosh pit. And I thought, well, what the hell? I'm going to put this thing on. And uh, So let me ask you. Mosh pit at 40 years old. Well, not quite. Not quite. <laughs> at almost 40 almost years old. Almost 40. How is that? You know what? I uh, it, it it brings me alive, man. I, I feel like a kid again. I, I pay for it after I was going to say, did you feel like a kid again the next day? Not always. Not always. <laughs> I mean, ministry a couple weeks ago was way worse. I was definitely I was definitely hung up for about a day. Yeah. Well, that, well that this was, was green one. jelly, though, so it wasn't quite as uh, intense a mosh pit. No. Not as many people, I assume. Oh, God, no. No, it was... Uh, it was sad. It was sad. <laughs> oh, little pig, little pig. I didn't, even, uh, I didn't even know that Green Jay was Joey was still alive until. Yeah, the, they were actually filming uh, their tour, their Ontario tour for their uh, upcoming D live DVD. Uh, they oh played. They played my. Sudbury. Um, they did a Niagara show. Falls. They did a show with my friend named Ben Andrus, and that's the only reason why I knew they were alive. He's like, I'm on tour with Green Jay. I'm like, they're alive. <laughs> like, Too yes, funny. I like this. Yeah. Well, that voice you are hearing there is uh, that of. Of Droids Canada admin uh, creator, uh, Mr. J himself, Todd Poole. Thank you for coming on the show, sir. Thanks for having me yet again. I put the droids in Canada. I'm trying to follow your lead here. It's no, not, don't don't try to follow my lead. I it mean, is the path I put forth is unfollowable. No, we were good. We were good last week, though. We had good momentum at the when we were at the event. We had good jokes. Oh yeah, well, even we, though you're wearing a Superman shirt, I let it go. But yeah. well, because my Superman shirt is BA. It is oh. very BA. Um, yeah, so we've got Todd on the show this week. Uh, we brought the droids on. Um, we're starting to form a little coalition here in the Niagara region with all the uh, the geek pages and groups around. Uh, we've got Droids Canada. We've got we've got the Geek, and now uh, Rat G Ryan's All Things Geek joining up to form the Legion of Geekdom. Meanwhile, at the Legion of Geekdom. And I think it's so much better that we go after the villains than the heroes because, as Steve and I were talking about earlier, the Legion of Doom had a way cooler headquarters. Like, popping out of the swamp, you've got this big skull-like headquarters. So I reminisce awesome. and remember that, but what only comes to my mind, to be honest with you, is the Legion of Doom from wrestling. And I just think of having this Ooh, intro music all the time. <laughs> be like oh what a nerd or something like that oh that could work, that could I, work. I'm it's actually like a nightmare all week it's been great <laughs> fantastic uh, so yeah so uh, we, we brought uh, Troy on this week uh, because we want to talk about obviously the biggest thing that's going on this weekend 
is uh, San Diego Comic Con 2015. Always a huge uh, hoopla. This is probably the biggest cr- uh, cash grab in all of uh, comic world and all of yeah. all of con world. Mm-hmm. It is the mecca. It is the granddaddy. It's it's the 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 guy that started it all. Yeah. So it's the mecca. So uh, I'm not even there this weekend, and they and they made fifty dollars off me. <laughs> okay, explain yourself. Well, I I had to order the uh, of course San Diego Comic Con exclusive Michonne figure that uh, Skybound uh, Skybound puts out every uh, year. They put out one exclusive yeah. every year at the Comic Con. New York just started doing it last year too, so I'm expecting one from them in September. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, this week now. So normally we uh, start off the show with this week in geek, but because San Diego Comic Con is going to take up so much of our this week in geek. This entire show is going to be This Week in Geek, with the exception, of course, of the fan favorite, Steve's five-minute movie review. Five minutes? Oh, I get five minutes. I five seconds. I get five five minutes. All right. There was a movie review? Slow your roll. Do I get a hint? What movie? No, no, no. This is is Steve's thing every week. Uh, Although last week we uh, we had the governator on. Um, and he did the review of uh, Terminator Genesis. Oh. Yeah. Uh, well, always good to have uh, the governor in the yeah. Niagara region. Love Arnold. Uh, yeah. It, it, and you know what? He looked really good on, on screen, too. He did. Uh, uh, Goldie did a great job uh, capturing him there. So <laughs> big ups to Goldie at uh, Wild Bunny Hair Photo Studios. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. That's it. Drop the Drop mic Drop the mic, and I'm walking away just <laughs> like uh, Cranston. Brian Cranston, which, oh, my God, we're going to get to that, too. But without further ado, why don't we just get into it with This Week in Geek. Still looking for a theme song for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, we're going to get started off with a little bit of sad news, unfortunately. We had uh, two passings this week, one as early as today. Um, first, we had, uh, well, today we had Roger Reese uh, pass away, veteran, comedic actor, um, really well known for his uh, roles as Robin Coulthard, I believe the, it was his last name, on Cheers. Uh, he played Sam's nemesis. Uh, always uh, was with Rebecca um, and then of course he uh, was the sheriff of Nottingham in uh, Robin Hood Prince uh, Men in Tights I was going to say Prince in Tights Whoa. Prince in Tights Whoa, Whoa. I, just, I just mix them both up there at the same time so you know we, we, we can't that have Alan that Rickman showed up. <laughs> let's, let's not do that okay <laughs> Alan Rickman will always be Hans Gruber I don't care what he's in that's just the way it is <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, so unfortunately, uh, Mr. Reese did pass away. Uh, I don't know if anyone watched The West Wing. Uh, I just recently got into it the last couple, maybe this 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 year. Really liked it. He was on that show as well. Uh, very pompous ambassador <laughs> from Britain and just hilarious. Aaron Sorkin is one of the greatest writers in Hollywood, in my opinion, hmm. just for dialogue alone. But uh, that is neither here nor there. Hmm. But yeah, so uh, unfortunately, uh, Mr. Reese did pass away at age of 71 today. Uh, they did not release a uh, cause of death. Um, but, uh, w- you know, our sympathies goes out to his family, friends, and fans. And then uh, we had another passing. Yeah, uh, longtime stage actor and uh, big movie screen actor, Egyptian born Omar Sharif, died at the age of 83. Yeah, probably the most famous Egyptian actor out there. I can't even think of another, honestly. Yeah, he's uh, best known for his roles in uh, Lawrence of Arla- Arabia, Arabia. Um, which he won, uh, or was nominated, sorry, for Best Supporting. Um, three Golden Globes for Dr. Shivago. Shiv- Shiv- yeah. Um, Funny Girl with Barbra Streisand. So. Yeah, he was he was huge uh, the late 60s, uh, early 70s, like. He was that, and he was like a playboy actor. too, right? Right. <laughs> and when we look at the pictures, and I don't see it. <laughs> no offense, Mister Sharif, <laughs> but I don't see it. And uh, cover myself up here. Um, but yeah, it's a uh, pretty sad week, though. Uh, some couple of veteran actors that we lost, unfortunately. Um, did you did you know Roger Reese at all, or any of his work? Todd? Well, he's he's been in so many films over his huge career mm. and he always ends up playing like a villain like a role um it, it's always heartbreaking to hear when someone passed this year has been horrible like, yeah we can be honest about that yeah we've had a lot of people pass on and some of them are not shocking um but a lot of them are um like we were we were talking about it earlier uh like if you're on howard stern's show i don't think anybody had a lot of these people in the celebrity death pool this year no 
you know, because a lot of them came out of left field. You weren't expecting. No. And in the, when you've seen these people, they look to be in good health, so... Well, you just never know, right? You got you got people out there that are tanks. Like, look at Betty White. Like, I mean, she looks pretty good for her age. Yeah. And, and Stan Lee, we almost had a close call with Stan Lee. Yeah, um, which is Sean sad. Sean Connery, too. he's still alive, not doing great, but he's still alive. Yeah. I mean, well, he stopped acting too, right? So uh, I I, he, I, I honestly believe dementia. when you stop when you stop working, I do believe that's a a big toll. It takes a big toll on your life because you're so used to being out there and doing things and. Your part of your soul dies, I, I I believe, you know, but... I mean, when you kind of lose that drive of your life, like, I mean, the only person I know that really adapted to the change very well was Jack Nicholson. Like, as soon as... I think... I don't even remember his last mm-hmm. film was. I, I know he did The Departed. He did a couple of films after that that were low budget and then moved yeah. on. All he does now is drink and sleep on grass. That's pretty much but all he watches he does the Lakers. Go to the Lakers. Oh, yeah, okay, well, Laker yeah, games. they yeah. pick him up and take him to the Lakers. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, beyond that, though, he was probably... Jack Nicholson only... doesn't need to be Jack Nicholson anymore because Leonardo DiCaprio is now Jack Nicholson. Well, if you've ever seen pictures of Leo lately, yeah. he looks like Jack Nicholson. But he doesn't look like young Jack Nicholson. He looks like 60-year-old Jack Nicholson. You know, and I mean, it felt like even watching the movie The Departed and Jack Nicholson was just passing the torch on though, to the younger generation of actors in that movie. Oh, exactly. He was done. You can't complain. He had a great career. But you know what? What a great movie to go out on. That was, oh, that was, love that I movie. Saw that movie. That's in the one of those movies, times. though. I was just gonna say that's one of those movies, though, where I can't watch it again. Just because, of, and not because of anything that happens in the movie. It's just because the entire movie. Spoiler alert. Um, I'm I'm waiting for Leo to get capped the entire movie. And then they get to the elevator scene, and I'm like, oh, my God, he actually made it out of this. Boom! Oh, my God, he died. <laughs> there was that ending had so much death. Oh, yeah. You just didn't know what to do with yourself. And then finally, like, okay, the movie's done, and then Wahlberg gets Damon. Yeah. And you're just like, okay. I don't know about you, but I was kind of hoping that was going to go the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> That's just based Not a on Wahlberg. Wahlberg fan, huh? Oh. I like Wahlberg in, like, 10% of his movies. So I guess you were a huge fan of The Happening. No. That was all sarcasm. No. Um, <laughs> huge fan of Fear. He was great yeah, Fear, in Fear, yeah, was the, his first movie. My favorite um, when, he, when he plays characters like himself, yeah. he's great. If he can play Marky Mark or Mark Wahlberg, he's fine. But when he has to step outside of that, yeah. for me, is it, it just doesn't translate well at all. I, I absolutely loved Pain and Gain. You might uh, really? Yeah. Really? Him and The Rock were absolutely hilarious. Yeah, see, that. and I turned that off about... Jeez, yeah, 45 minutes in. It's like the worst rock film, in my opinion. And rock, in my opinion, does not you, do wrong. You saw, you saw the Tooth Fairy, right? <laughs> that was like... Tooth Fairy. I was half drunk, The Tooth so, Fairy. So, I mean, it was okay. Past- <laughs> no, but I mean, just before we jump topic, like Mark Wahlberg, my favorite film with him is a lot of film, is a film a lot of people never seen called The Big Hit. Yeah, I like Lou the big, Lou Diamond big Phillips. Hit. Classic yeah. Lou Diamond Phillips. I think I think and a lot of people know that one because it was I, it was actually a big hit at the box office at the time. I brought it up once and people were like, "What are you talking about?" We're old. <laughs> <laughs> we're just gonna put that out there for oh. you. Oh, oh. Uh, so yeah, yes, we're gonna move on from Marky Mark for now um, because I'm sure by the end of Comic Con we'll hear some kind of news about him being in Transformers yeah. 18. Um, I'm so sick of Transformers. <laughs> But I digress. Um, so, other news in this week in geek. Loving this, Fox has decided to cancel the 3D conversion of the Fantastic Four movie. What's the matter, Fox? Figuring you're not going to make any money on this movie? I saw like the funniest meme the other day, and it's like opening night. It's like a picture. Yeah. It's like empty theater opening night. Fantastic Four. No, I, I, I say that's wrong because I'm going to be there. Going, I don't even know why I'm watching yeah, this. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think there's going to be. I think they're going to do okay in the box office. I'm hoping they don't do good enough to garner a sequel, which they've already optioned a sequel before they even made this one. And the option with, with that is absolutely ridiculous. To mm. get Brian Singer to make a, another X Men film and then cross them over. That's still just a rumor. I right know now. it's just a yeah. rumor. Yeah. There's also a rumor that after X Men Apocalypse, Fox is done with don't the X Men. Well, no, no, that they're saying that they might do the go the Sony route Ugh. and uh, merge and do a merger. They'll still they'll still do uh, X Men movies, yeah. but with Marvel. On their shoulder, saying no, like this. Well, that still no, gives you, that still gives like you this. hope that Mel Gibson could be Wolverine one day. Because, I've you know, given up Gibson on old man. Will not 
touch most independent films. Yeah. If it's a huge Oh, he does of, now. He, he does Because he has no choice. He's got no choice. <laughs> he's got but got I mean, no choice. if someone said, I want to do an old man Logan, I will agree with you that he would be a good old man oh, yeah. Logan. I still, I still maintain that no matter what happened with him as a person, how horrible he can be with his views <laughs> when he's drunk and being antagonized. <laughs> Um, not that I'm making excuses for him. Uh, he's still one of the finest actors on the planet. It's just, he's one of those guys where you, you can see him. I When I watch Mel Gibson from movie to movie, I don't see Mel Gibson, Mel Gibson, Mel Gibson. I see, you know, I see the dad from Ransom. I see Martin Riggs, you know. Yeah. I see um, Sir William Wallace. I see the Patriot. You know, he he has range. And because of that tirade, it ruined his career. Which it was he was an already an established you know, person at that point. And that's, but that's the problem with Hollywood is that they like to ruin people's careers and, and it could be I'm not going I'm not gonna make an excuse for him, but there is far worse things that have happened in this world that we should focus on. Well how does how is he all right, but Christian Bale freaking out like he does and beating up his mom and sister. <laughs> oh, but <laughs> we still awesome. love we still love Christian Bale. He's awesome. Cause look how much weight he loses for this role and then how much he gains. You know what? Come on, I'm sorry. Before that, he was untouchable in Hollywood. He was just plotting every single film. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, when you see in the movie The Machinist, Machinist you yeah. cannot touch him. I don't think there was anyone that could have done that role as well as he did. And no. then he did The Beaver or The No, Gopher that was Mel Gibson. That was oh, Mel Gibson. Yeah, yeah. we're talking yeah, about I, I saw sorry. that yeah. in the video store. I'm like, no. Yeah. <laughs> I the have Beaver? too much respect for you. <laughs> yeah. And, and then, it, like, how does Jodie Foster convince him to do this? Jodie Foster is Jodie Foster. Like, I mean, she makes horrible films. Jo she had a couple good yeah. under her belt. But, I mean, I mean, what has she done in the last five years worth mentioning? Or, like, mm. I mean, they, they really pick on the a beaver. lot of people. <laughs> but, I mean, I like The how, movie. But here's the thing, though. Gilbs, Gibson um, is still, I wouldn't say being persecuted. But, I mean, people look at him and go, oh, my God, look who you've done. Every time I mention Schwarzenegger has done some horrible oh, things, yeah. too. But it's like, oh, he made a movie? Forgot it. We're good. Yep. We're good. He, oh, we're back. We love Kindergarten Cop. <laughs> Make me another sequel to Commando. Let's go. <laughs> don't hey. even. Don't. You shut your filthy mouth. <laughs> shut your filthy mouth right now. We don't want to hear poke, stuff poke, like that. Poke, poke. <laughs> poke that evil bear. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Fantastic Four, as we were talking about. You know, like Steve and I were talking about this earlier, and we've mentioned this on the show before, too. This could very well be a great sci-fi movie. It mm -hmm. will never, ever be a Fantastic Four movie. No. Never. They have changed, and I, I don't want to be one of those people that freak out when they change a role, like make a character white to black or black to white. Or I hate it. Man. I hate that. You know what? I don't what? really care at the end of the day. What I care about, is this going to be a good film? What I hate is how fanboys are so fake, though. Because yep. when, every time that I post on the page about how much I hate the, the race swapping and the gender swapping. People are always on my case about it. Then I post a, a note about Stan Lee saying the exact same thing I did and everyone's... High fives. <gasps> well, it's Stan Lee. You don't go against God. You never go against God. Or whoa, 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 I, took, whoa, whoa, whoa. I took flack. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stan Lee. Flack. Stan Lee in, is a God, but he's not God. World, he is not Morgan world. Freeman. Well, no. He's like, not. let's just get that straight. If he had the voice, we'd be done. <laughs> No, but I mean, in the fanboy world, they will always look at Stan Lee's final answer as that's it. But even I took flack on our page, um, shamelesspotfacebook.com, Troy's Canada. Um, <laughs> we posted a photo a long time ago of the new Ghostbusters, and I took so Ooh. much heat about that. They're like, you're just mad because they're female. I'm like, no, it's Paul Fay. I do not like him as a director. I don't like him as a writer. I don't like him as a producer. He's done some good stuff. I like I'm Bridesmaids. Saying, you know what? You know what? You I really did. I was the only one that I, did, I, though. I didn't like it. Which movie? No, Bridesmaids. I was the only one that did. Wow. And you know what I watched the other day There's that I was surprised I didn't here. mind? Um, and I was surprised because I really don't like her movies lately was Spy. You like that film? I just did a review and gave it, like, like uh, rocket lit out of ten. No, no, no. I'm not saying it was a great movie by any any standards, but I think it was out of her last three movies that was her better one. I guess. And probably the same with Statham. Well, I, because I, Statham does some really horrible movies. I don't care what anybody wants to say about Statham. Yeah. Statham is Statham every single. Statham is the transporter. Don't reboot it. Too uh, late. No, they already did. The TV show was horrible. Because I don't even know why I watched Well, because that, that guy can't act. But, no. but I, I saw that movie, and the first hour I was sitting there wondering why it was there. 
And then, because there was nothing happening, she wasn't playing the typical character she plays. It wasn't until, like, the hour mark is when she started being vulgar, being, like, up in people's faces, mm-hmm. and then it picked up. And then Jason Statham is not a comedian, in my opinion, in any shape or form. No, but... But he did well for what he was because handed. The, the, because it was so against his archetype, yeah. I, I th- I'm not saying I love the movie. I'm not even saying I I enjoyed the movie. It was just... It feels like you are. I did kind of enjoy it. Like it, it was. I was just. I was just. Yeah. I. I didn't think it was as bad as I. I thought it was going to be because I held out no hope at all for. Well, for even that on movie. the other side of the coin, everyone kept saying about how awesome Ted Two was, and I was like, "This is all right." Like, I mean, I'm a huge Family Guy fan. Yeah. This is a live action Family Guy episode to me. That was Ted One for me. Ted One, I yeah. couldn't get into. Ted Two, I. I, I really, I really liked Ted Two. Yeah. Over the I, first I like. One. Yeah. Uh, I was on the fence. Like, obviously, the sperm bang scene will forever scar everyone forever. I did hear three or four people throw up in the theater. <laughs> that would, made it funnier for me, and my girlfriend told me to shut up. But that was so awesome. <laughs> but uh, I'll segue, segue us back. San Diego Comic Con. <laughs> well, you know what, though? Um, I'm bad for that, too, so I'll... No, it's all good. It's all good, brother. Welcome to our show. That's what we do here. <laughs> it's it, it's okay though because I think we've we've hit enough there with Fantastic Four, and uh, Steve's going to hit us up with our next topic that we're going to hit on anyways, and we're going to expand on all these anyways because, like I yeah, said, this yeah. this whole show this week is just going to be this week in geek. So excellent, Steve. What do you got up for us there, brother? Well, we have the announcement of a possible reunion. Wait, whoa, 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 possible reunion? Are you talking? Is Caitlyn Jenner getting back together with Chris Jenner? <laughs> no, we wouldn't be that lucky. Oh. Sorry, too go ahead. Real. Sorry, did anyone care? That no. was too, too real. Too real? Too soon? <laughs> too soon? I better go outside and be offended. <laughs> Make sure you bring the Confederate flag with you. Oh, jeez. Whoa. That was Whoa. too dark even for Whoa. you, sir. <laughs> Uh, don't even oh, make, oh, don't you, even make oh, that comment oh. again. You made it last week, and it was too bad. <laughs> yeah, we'll be here all week. Those of you that will be watching the video, you'll know what we're talking about. <laughs> um, yeah, so what, what's... This? Goonies 2. This gave me so much joy to see the interview and to see, yes, Goonies 2 is happening. And you have to have everybody on board for this. Oh, yeah. that, that's the only way it would have... Mm-hmm. Well, we're not going to have, we're not gonna have Ma Fratelli, and we won't have uh, Sloth, because Sloth is dead, right? Well, I'm it explains sure a lot about Niagara Falls Comic Con, because the two Fratelli brothers were... With Sean Astin. Yeah, mm-hmm. they were with there, and they were promoting this. Like, it makes perfect sense when they do stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like last year with Fan Expo, when they suddenly had a tween, uh, Twin Peaks uh, reunion after how many years, and it's like, oh, we're making a show again. What? I may have to pause the show right now because the Suicide Squad trailer just leaked online. No! We can't. We will wait till after the show. Folks, go online and watch it after this is over. Or go to my page because it's already on there. Um, (laughs) But, uh, yeah, no, I'm excited for the Goonies, too. Um, It's been such a long time coming. And uh, in this day and age of remakes, I'm okay with some sequels. Sequels yeah. aren't that bad, you know, if you've got the original cast. Like, like, yeah, back. that was key for, yeah. for everybody being happy. Sequels ha- being are happy. okay as long as Paul Anderson's not directing them. Yeah. I don't know who that is. Director of Mortal Kombat 2, director of Resident Evil. Oh, that's probably why I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> we swear it's going to be good after the film. What did I just watch? Let's see, I had the foresight. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, I- I'm all right with the Goonies. Um, I, that was a big problem with the Ghostbusters, I think, with a lot of people, too, was uh, people wanted Ghostbusters 3. Even if they had the female cast and made it a, a sequel, you know, where you had the originals in it somehow, um, like passing the torch, but people are just so upset because it's 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 original, and it's not original, but it's it's not canon, you know. It's, it, it's to me, when I look at reboot. it... Ghostbusters was fine the way it was. The way even how the second one ended. A lot of people were like, ah, we could get a third one out of this. But it, it felt like it was good. Like, I mean, it didn't need another film. I think a lot of people are... Do you have... Go back to the fake fanboys. You go back to that. You have those people who are just generally u- upset just for the sake of being upset. Just to mm-hmm. have a voice of saying, you know, this is crap because they're all female. But then you have the other people, which I'm going to say we're on that side. Where we're like, well, this doesn't look promising. Um, it looks like a cash grab to me. And how many years did Dan Aykroyd sit there and try and get a third movie going? Yep. How many years? And then, of course, after Harold Ramis dies, everyone's like, "Well, we're gonna make this film now." How much of that? How much of that though was 
the rest of the cast not wanting to work with Aykroyd. It was all Bill Murray from my understanding. Well, I know Bill Murray didn't want to go back, and I know Ernie Hudson wanted to go back, and Harold Ramis had talked about possibly going yeah. back. But the biggest cheerleader out there seemed to be the person that antagonized Bill Murray the most, I think, or yeah. that got under his skin the most. And yeah, I, I think that had a lot to do with it was Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray just not wanting to work with him again. I don't, I don't know why they had a falling out. I never really researched that to that degree. But I mean, it, Bill Murray seems to be very set in his ways in his life now. He doesn't want to do much of anything. If he does a film, it's got to be good for him to come out. Um, oh, he made a huge splash at Comic Con. Uh, yep, like he, he just showed up randomly at Comic Con yep. just because, or he walks into it someone's. Wasn't as, uh, it wasn't party. as good. It wasn't as good as Team Coco. Yes, Conan, that was good. Conan O'Brien arriving at uh, Comic Con <laughs> as the Mad Max guitar player. Oh my God, Conan, you rock, brother! And I don't even need to tell him that. I, he just knows. He knows. Oh, he knows. He, he knows. Is he the Bill Murray of late night? Yeah, you know, I shortly after Letterman had start to slow down in his later career, I, I felt felt like Conan had become the new Letterman. You know, with the gags and the skits mm-hmm. and the reoccurring characters and the and the not caring what people think attitude that Letterman and Bill Murray have. Right. You know, um, and and that just that resonates so well with people, especially nowadays. It's it's a revelation to to a lot of people, or you know, uh, to see someone who just has that I don't care attitude. I'm gonna be me. You know. And that all depends on the person, too, because, you know, yep. my ex-wife had that. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, 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 oh too soon? Too soon? I'm sorry. Um, we'll save that for another show. We'll do that <laughs> on a podcast. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, other news that come out this week, and I am so, so, so super stoked for this. Um, okay, I'm not a big fan of Gods and Monsters, what right. Bruce Timms just came out with, but... Everything else Bruce Timm has, has done from Batman the Animated Series to Superman the Animated Series to the Justice League series um, has been fantastic. Absolutely. To find out that he is now doing the killing joke is the greatest thing on in, in the world, especially with the fact that DC has gone with their animated lately with just not caring how much violence they show in their cartoons now. Um, they're going to do it and do it right, I think. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it goes back to how lenient is Warner Brothers Animated going to be? I mean, I watched uh, Assault on Arkham. They were really lenient in that film. The, the sex scenes? The se- I was like, there's a sex scene in an animated film? Am I in Japan? No, like, like, I, mean, the, I was confused. All the swearing and, oh, yeah. you know, and, and the swearing has been coming ever since uh, uh, Flashpoint. Yep. Um, and to tell you the truth, I haven't really liked the DC animated lately. I don't like the way they're going. Um, I like DC. Listen, it's the same problem people have with Man of Steel. It's oh. hear me out though. <clears throat> Superman is not supposed to be Batman. Plain and simple, he's not supposed to be dark. He's not supposed to be angry. He's not supposed to be brooding. That's Batman. Yeah. Your entire universe does not have to be. Batman, nope. and that's the way DC Animated has been going ever since the Flashpoint Paradox. It's been getting progressively more uh, aggressive, more violent, yep. more profane, yep. um, more sex. That was just, that blew my mind. I won't you lie. Know? Even when I wrote the review for that, I'm like, I can't believe there's a sex scene in this film. I can't even fathom what's going on with this right now. But Warner Brothers Animated seems to do just, the things no one else wants to do. And every single anima, animated film I've watched even Superman ones have been okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, they've been pretty, you know. Superman Doomsday was great. Know. Yeah, Superman Doomsday was good. Uh, but I have to stick to the Dark Knight Part 1, Dark Knight Part 2. Didn't care for him too much. Really? I've got them both. I've watched them multiple times. They will I, always pop Batman because Pat, Batman is their most marketable character. Mm-hmm. Superman was, I'm sure at one point, Superman was probably the big guy. I mean, Superman probably made the most money for DC at one point. Oh, for sure. But Batman in the DC Universe is really the only one that had a successful movie run since the Christopher Reeves Superman. So... Yeah, I guess. I mean, I can't think of any other DC film. Oh, maybe Green Lantern. That was a great film that Ryan Reynolds refuses to talk about to this day. No, no, he talked about it just the other day. He yeah, was talking he said, about, but... Uh, he was talking about the costume, how about how... Uh, yeah. He, didn't even, he never saw the costume until the end. He's like, how much he loves Deadpool because he's actually wearing a Deadpool yes. costume. Um, I, I do not blame 
Green Lantern on Ryan Reynolds at all. Nope. He agreed to this movie before there was a script. The script went through how many different rewrites, mm-hmm. different director. It right. was just too much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, w- we digress. Um, I think Killing Joke's going to kill it, though. Uh, Bruce but, Tim, yeah, yes, I did say that. But here's the question, though. Are they going to answer the question that every person asks? Yes, has? he killed the Joker at the end of The Killing Joke. No, what happens to Barb Gordon? The one that caused the controversy with Variant 39. Oh, nobody... People that's, care. Because, you know, they cared enough to take it. There was nothing wrong with that variant. No, people cared because Batgirl had changed her image at that point, and they didn't want it being so serious. The, the biggest question that still comes out of the killing joke is whether or not Alan Moore really killed off, had Batman kill off the Joker at the end there, where they go off the panel there. Yeah. I maintain he did kill him, and then they just changed the continuity of it. Yeah. You know, he, Alan Moore has never ever came out and disputed it. Yep, if that's he, true. And Alan Moore is not a person to hold back words. No, nope. if if he heard w- w- not Jeff Johns, it was um, Grant Morrison. Yes, if he heard Grant Morrison say this and it was not true, you know, yeah. the next day, not even the next day, Alan Moore is out somewhere, just ripping a new one through Morrison, saying, "No way, man." I'm sorry. The Joker died there. And there, like, there has been, like, even in the recent storyline, has it, did he die? We don't really know. Mm-hmm. But I just read the recent issue of Batman that came out this week. I'm not going to tell you, but I'll tell you. I was just going to say, I haven't read it yet. I'm still too bad. Yeah. Mind blown? Your uh, mind was blown? Um, not as good as Walking Dead 144. Yeah, I know. I've heard. That we're changed gonna, everything. We're going to get into that, and we're not going to spoil okay. too much no from spoiling, that either. No spoilers. No spoilers, because... No spoilers. The comic just came out this week, and that's oh, way too that's way too spoilerish. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the killing joke. What do you got next for us, there, Steve? Well, uh, I don't know. Do you want to talk uh, trailers? Because we had a bunch of them. Yeah. We did, we did. And why don't you hit that first one? Oh, you you know what? Actually, before we hit that, let me just send a reminder out to everybody that you are listening to Ratchy Radio right here on one hundred three point seven. FM, CFBU, <laughs> Brock University Radio. Where are we again? Or you can be listening to us online at cfbu.ca. Um, and we're just going to hit our first break because we're a little late with that. And we will be right back. All right. Welcome back to Rad G Radio right here on 103.7 FM, CFBU, Brock University Radio right here in the heart of St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. I'm your host, Ryan Fleming. Or you could be listening to us live online as well at cfbu.ca because we are on the interweb because we are cool like that, folks. Um, sitting here in studio uh, discussing San Diego Comic Con and everything in the world with uh, my co host, Steve Lambert. And of course, we have a uh, special guest this week, uh, the creator of Droids Canada, Mr. J himself. Todd Pool. Yeah, I'm really happy to talk about San Diego Comic Con. Where Ron in Burgundy the world is Common San Diego? Well, they were we're good because they renewed the con for two more years in San Diego, which makes no sense. Yeah, I know because isn't it always they been renewed a- the biggest con? Good for you. Yep. Yeah, that that must have that been is a, news. That must have been a <laughs> that must have been a tough decision so, for them. Do we want <laughs> this multi million dollar? Fan Expo. Nah, no. Right, we we so, hate bags of money. Yeah, who wants more money and lots of lots of exposure? Um, <laughs> so before we get into the rest of uh, our This Week in Geek, or as we should call it, This Week in Comic Con, This Week in San Diego, um, we got to get to the fan favorite part portion of the show, and that's our five-second movie review with the one and only Steve Lambert. What do you got for us this week, Steve? Oh, this week uh, I went and seen Minions. Minions. Yeah. All right. So, so uh, this will make and break for me right here. Th- well, that's just it, and you know what? These are very in depth. So, okay. Bo- box off. Seconds. Box office numbers ha- have been been okay. known to fluctuate. Fabricate. Poor no. my review. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> true, and I'm so. hearing this one's. Uh, well, depending on your review, this might break break the box office. Yeah, and you know what? Uh, I probably need a lot less than five seconds for this one. Well, so. Whoa, 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 let's not get crazy. <laughs> okay, so when, you, when you're ready, sir, your time is starting now. I think it can be summed up in one word. Bananas! All right, well, thank you very much for that review again this week, Steve. That was a fantastic review, as usual. Um, I know the fans get a little big kick out of that, and with that review there, I know it's just going to drive the people to the box office. But here's a question You should get minions. a cut. i got to ask you about Minions. Did you find... I haven't seen it. 
Um, well, more to him, but because <laughs> you're kind of there. Um, <laughs> did you find that the, the the language that the minions use to be vulgar or can be considered offensive at any time? Are you talking about? Uh, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I was busy eating my Happy Meal. <laughs> Way to jump my my uh, my this week in geek story. That was going to be my minion well, story. Right I guess there. I guess we'll get to that right now. This is what we call a segue, Todd. I segued you back earlier. No, no, so. no, no, no. As the host, my oh. job is to segue back into oh. it. See, he speaks of minions movie, then I talk about the controversy. Oh. Wow. So that's right. Send all your hate mail to Droids Canada, care of Dr. J, I Mr. Will, J. I will check to see how much I care. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, no. Uh, of course, uh, as Todd's alluding to, and Steve as well, it was uh, some Happy Meal problems with their Minion toys, where it sounds like they're saying mf -er. Like they have uh, Sammy. A couple of them, um, if you try hard enough, you hear that. But come on. People are just... People are just... Trying to yeah, hard. you you hear what you want to at that point, right? It's well, that's just it, right? So just apply the logic. I'm offended that you're offended, <laughs> and just use that on them all the time. Yeah, that was our show last week. <laughs> I'm done dealing with the offended generation that we live in right oh, now. That's horrible. We are offended of everything. Well, I guess we don't have that, and that was actually going to be yours anyway, Steve. That's all right. Nice. I think we were talking trailers anyways, which we kind of got yeah. away from. Well, yeah, yeah, we can get back into the trailers anyways. Um. I want to talk. I'm sorry, but I got to get into the biggest trailer. Um, I know, should save the best for last, but really, I can't. I just can't wait. Batman v Superman just knocked my freaking socks off. This trailer was so intense. Um, now, Cavill still looks to be playing the role of Superman pretty horribly, um, but the movie itself looks fantastic. Uh, I like everything that I saw in that trailer. Yeah, it looked it looked pretty intense to me. The the action. The... I like Lex Luthor with the flowing red locks, like he like he normally he would have in the comic books. Uh, pre his uh, accident with Superman, I'm hoping that's going to be in there somehow incorporated. Um, they did show pictures of Jesse Eisenberg on set with a shaved head, so it will happen by the end of the movie, I do believe, unless that was just for uh, Suicide Squad, which he's in as well. Um, but. Oh my God! Um, Wonder Woman looked great. Wonder Still Woman looked offense. great. She it's, looked. It's not about her size. It's about her acting ability. I never was sold on her acting ability. What have you What have you seen her in besides Fast and Furious? First, she did some minor work in some type of TV sitcom. I don't remember the name of it. I just popped into it just to see because someone told me to change my mind, and I was like, mm. "It's okay." Like, I mean. To go from I'm a nobody to oh my god I'm Wonder Woman and I'm gonna fashion out all these movies I, I'm not a selling point on that. But not every, everyone can do that though. But a lot of a lot of movies are that way. You know, you start off oh, with yeah. a, a nobody to put them in the big role. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think she's gonna be great. Uh, the one thing that I do love is that she has an accent because I don't think yeah. Wonder Woman should have an American accent. I still never understood why Wonder Woman wore red, white, and blue coming from Themyscira. <laughs> Like, wait, wait, and they're like, no, no, that's the mascara's colors. Well, then why is there an eagle and stars, <laughs> stars and stripes? I'm just saying, but it is what it is. It, um, I, I'm really, really excited. They show there's even a, a quick glimpse of what looks like a teenager or a young dark-haired boy swimming in the water, which I can only assume is like a flashback of Aquaman. Mm -hmm. um, we. What I love, one of my favorite things about the trailer is they're showing the final battle between Zod and Superman through Bruce Wayne's eyes. And you see the heat vision going through decimating Wayne Towers. Yeah, Wayne Financial Horse. Yeah, yeah, and you and you just see Bruce Wayne running right towards the rubble, all the smoke, and he gets engulfed in the in the in the in the dust and the clouds, and then it shows him again cradling a young girl and just the look of evilness in his eyes, like pure hate. For the longest time, I was watching. I was waiting for something because I'm, I was pretty skeptical about it. Because a lot, first you had to deal with the Ben Affleck hate, then you had to deal with the Gal Gadot hate, and then the Jesse Eisenberg. I don't know why people still hate J Jesse Eisenberg. I think I that's think a he's perfect a great actor, and it's a so perfect casting I think just too. Hate him because oh look, he's got hair. Shut up. Who hmm. cares? But I think what sold me on this was I think it was Zack Snyder came out a couple weeks ago and said. 
this is why this happened. It's showing something that's never really happened before, that they're holding a superhero accountable for their actions. Like, I mm-hmm. can't think of any superhero film that they said, you just obliterated the entire city, but you saved us. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, the opening of the trailer is uh, Holly Hunter, who is uh, a senator. It, yep. it looks of, looks like, and they're bringing Superman to court and you know holding him accountable, as you said, which is which is good because they are actually mentioning it and yeah. doing something about it. Um, I I love the line from uh, Perry White. Clark, nobody cares about Clark Kent versus Batman That's versus true. the Batman, yeah. not versus Batman, the Batman. Which is a pretty big distinct uh, distinction, I think. You know, <laughs> yes, distinct. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm I'm really excited for this movie, and that brings me to the next piece of news. Uh, so happy about this because anyone who knows me and has been following my page for a long time knows that well before Ben Affleck was toted to be Batflick or the new Batman, I was campaigning for Ben Affleck to be Batman. And I wanted him to be Batman. Not only did I want him to be Batman, but I wanted him to write the Batman movie and direct the Batman movie. And guess what we found out this week? Ben Affleck will be writing and directing a solo Batman movie, which I believe will be the death of Batman. I believe it'll be the battle for the cow. I I think it's going to be a Red Hood movie because there's rumors that they want to make Red Hood a central figure in the DC universe. Um, So I believe it's going to be a Red Hood story, but I believe that either Batman dies at the end of it or he's not going to be able to continue as Batman anymore and we're going to get a new Batman. Activates the Nightfall Initiative. <laughs> Don't, Don't even get me started st- no, on that. Yo, no, I'm like 98%. Yeah, no. there's like there's <laughs> one compound I can't find now. That's it. I've got everything else done. You co- completed the, all the Riddler so, oh, I've no, got you, no, no. It will say you can do it. Yeah, at, and you oh, I've still done. Have the Riddler, and you'll do it, and then it's like, by the way, we were just playing with you. You still got to go back and take care of all the. Yeah, rest. exactly. If you want to see the full Nightfall, keep yeah. keep playing. Yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I mean, the you know, it'd be a good storyline too. I think they can hash out to be pretty fantastic for Batman as well. The Court of Owls is a pretty solid storyline. They can't. They can't. Though like, he's too old. He's yeah, too old at this point, though. They they, they can't do a Jason Todd one. How, how? When did Jason Todd happen? They said in the trailer it's been 20 years that he's been Batman, and then he stopped doing it. He, they say in the yeah, trailer that hero stopped that for. Way. And there's, if you look, there's in that trailer as well. You know how they in the original trailer they showed the bronze statuette mm-hmm. of Superman's. Yeah. They have one of Robin this time, and it's the Joker saying "ha ha ha" spray that's painted right, all right. over it, which means he also have he's made to believe he's dead. You and know? they have like no mention of the other Robin that's in this film. I okay, so this is this is the way I want it. I want Jensen Ackles as Red Hood. Okay. Why? Why not? I don't know. Why not? He's he's know. perfect for it. Honestly, yes. he's he's got the look, he's got the size, and he's got the acting abilities. Jensen Ackles, um, and then you get Tim Drake in the movie, mm-hmm. so it's just like the the books, and you have Logan Lerman play the part. And I think Logan Lerman is. Tim Drake, like I've been, okay. I've been campaigning for him almost as hard as I have been for Ben Affleck as uh, as Batman, and of course I say that because you know without me they would never have gotten well, the right, role, right? <laughs> With that bit of uh, you know integrity, <laughs> yeah, 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 whatever. We're gonna go to our last break here, folks. I just want to remind everybody you are listening to one hundred three point seven FM CFBU. Brock University Radio, the Rat G Radio Show. I'm Ryan. I'm sitting here with Todd Poole from Droids Canada. I'm sitting yeah. here with uh, Steve Lambert uh, from Steve Lambertville. <laughs> and uh, we will be right back after these messages. All right. Welcome back to Rat G Radio right here on 103.7 FM CFBU Brock University Radio. Coming at you out of the heart of St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. Or you can be listening to us live online at cfbu.ca. Um, and folks, don't forget to check out uh, our page. Uh, we are on Facebook. Of course, that's what got us all started. And that's Ryan's All Things Geek. Look us up there. Give us a like. Give us a share. Uh, and you can also, if you want to become a little more involved with the show... Uh, you can always ask to join our Rat G group. That's R A T G Radio Group. Uh, send us an invite. Uh, we'll accept because we never say no. <laughs> and then, uh, of course, uh, don't forget to go out and check out uh, our compatriot here, uh, Todd Poole's page, Droids Canada, formerly the droids you are looking for. 
Yes. Yes, yes indeed. So, uh, geez, we're just blowing through the show. We could have made this a two-hour show. Um, you know what? I think we're going to have to do a podcast midweek at some point so we could uh, talk about all of Comic-Con because, oh, my Lord. But we're going to keep moving here. I'm going to go on. Uh, Steve's going to get us started with our next piece of news. Well, uh, something we haven't been able to talk about for a while, and that's uh, The Walking Dead. Wow. What? That It's going to be so amazing. That trailer. Rick's the bad guy. I know yeah. we talk about oh. this all the time. <clears throat> Why don't you you talk talk about what we were talking about earlier, where you think we might get a a melding here, maybe, or maybe that wasn't you actually. I was talking with somebody else. Mind meld? No, they were thinking that uh, we might get like that. Rick might become actually Nagan. Oh, I I did hear that. It wasn't us talking about that, but I did hear that somewhere. Yeah, can you imagine that? Because (laughs) because Rick is pretty evil on the show. I'm sorry, he is he's a villain. To me, the trailer seemed like it was pitting Morgan against, against Rick. Rick. Yeah, that's the way I I seen it. Yeah, I see Morgan dying this season. I mean, Morgan has survived a lot longer if you read the comics, I guess. Yeah, but it, you can't be mad at Rick. The senator let the pit bull off the leash at the end of the last season, per se. He was evil before that. He was always been battling his demons. We cannot hide. He has seen a lot. In well, the last yeah. Five seasons. So has everybody in The Walking Dead. And everyone handles it differently. Yeah, and of I course uh, we had the trailer for Fear, which uh, we finally know now, August twenty third. Mm-hmm. Um, now, what do you think of Fear of the Walking Dead? I, I like it. Uh, I like the fact that we're going to get to see how everything started. But I think uh, I think once that wears off, it's going to be whether people have got invested in the characters or not, or whether the show can survive. Exactly. Well said. Yeah, I'm totally on board with you with that too. That's. It's going to all be dependent on the actual characters themselves, and yeah, because once it's full blown, it's it's just The Walking Dead again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Without without the characters you like, right? You know. So, what about you, Todd? I mean, Fear of the Walking Dead answers a lot of questions. Even Kirkman didn't even have the answers for it. It's just kind of like, okay, so let's explain why this came to be. You've had how many issues of the original comic book, and it kind of touches on the past, but nothing to be fully detailed. And now you're going to get a show that's going to explain everything right from ground zero. Conveniently on American soil as well. <laughs> <laughs> Conveniently. I don't remember, Conveniently. Was it Los Angeles? I think it was Los I think it's Los Angeles, yeah. yeah. Conveniently. Well, it's either it's, when the end of the world happens, it's in L.A. or New York. I'd say Florida, basalt. Um, oh. And it looked like the end of the world last night at, uh, at Kevin Smith's panel. <laughs> oh, wow, I yeah. So bad for him. <laughs> well, 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 let's let's jump ahead and let's tell, let's talk about that. Yeah, uh, Star Wars. Uh, of course, it was their panel. J.J. Uh, Abrams. They which was a the, uh, behind the scenes trailer, which I think we all saw. Yeah. Uh, we all went crazy. It for. looked awesome. It, it had that old feel. Just the, the mm-hmm. production value of it and. The just, costumes. And it, the, our the, first the look the at puppets. Princess Leia. Absolutely. Our first look at... Is she still a princess? That's a good question. Is she just Leia? Well, no. Is she a queen? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not I'm not sure. But, yeah. Hamill looks good. Hamill, yeah. Hamill looks... Hamill. He looks a lot better than he did two better. years ago. Yeah. Well, he... Like, even him and... Like, I know he trimmed down. Campbell trimmed down, too, which you'll get to later. Yeah. I mean, they, he looks fantastic. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, and then uh, after the panel, J.J. Abrams uh, sprung it on everybody that he was inviting everyone to a free concert with uh, what was the San Diego Symphony yeah. doing Star Wars music. Which we reported on. We were like, oh, what a great guy. What a great thing J.J. just did. Thank you, Jar Jar Abrams. That is fantastic. <laughs> yeah. And then we failed to forget or he failed to take into account that he wasn't the last presenter in Hall H that day. Kevin Smith was up next. Kevin Smith was up next to promote Yoga Hosers. Which is a continuation from Hus. All right. right. Uh, Hus, Tusk. 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 Yes. Right. Which, uh... That, yeah, yeah, that movie's messed. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I listened, I listened to the show that created that one. He was on a podcast somewhere, yeah. and they, they were talking. Uh, someone had wrote in about, basically, it, the guy from Tusk. You know, it was the same type of guy. He was like, who would like to come over and make a, a walrus suit for you? And they're like, oh, let's make this into a movie. Um, I've heard it's a really good movie, Tusk. I haven't seen yeah. it. I've heard it's like, 
I heard Justin Long's great in the movie, it, and same with the bad guy. I liked it. It's it's definitely out there. It is not for everybody. Yeah. I'll, I'll just say that. Well, Yoga Hosers is a sequel to it because the two girls from the convenience store in it, which are Harley Quinn, which is uh, Kevin Smith's daughter, and I forget the other girl's name, but it's Johnny Depp's daughter. Yep. Um, the Yoga Hosers is going to be based on their two characters. And Johnny Depp's going to be making a cameo. Yeah. And then there's, there's going to be a third movie with Jay and Silent Bob in it. It's called Moose Jaws. Right. <laughs> Which is... So this is all going to be a contained Kevin Smith universe. I'm actually pretty excited about that. Do I, do I hear a comic book? I hear a comic book. Wow. Men. Um, oh. <laughs> what? No. Stop. I'll be here all week. <laughs> but yeah, no, that was... Uh, that was Pretty rude of Jar Jar <laughs> afterwards, well, you know. This would not be liked in Tom and Snow. But well, here's a question, though, and I'm I, I gotta play devil's advocate. Did he know? How could he not? There's schedules. You know, There's thing, schedules. He could have had a PR guy. This happens all the time. You could have had a PR guy say, "You're on at this time to this time, and that's it." Yeah. Well, I don't know, man. I, I think it was a bit of a d bag move. It still is. Like, <laughs> but I mean, I'm not saying. If if he that. knew, which I don't see how he couldn't know. It's a huge D-bag move, just plain and simple. Um, okay, so we're going to move on from that. The Doctor Who trailer uh, released. Mm-hmm. Um, I was very happy with that. One of the best things, or one of the things I'm most excited about was the very end of it. Maisie Williams showing up at the very end of it. Uh, the littlest Stark the, with her needle. Yep. Um And they're saying she may be a reoccurring mm-hmm. character, and that her and the doctor have history. Mm-hmm. Theory? Because when she talks, she sounded like she was having a bit of a Scottish accent. Mm-hmm. Could she be young Amelia Pond? She could be. I mean, this is... They, I would love it. I'm just saying. They brought this up a couple like months ago that she was going to be on the show. But it would, they were basing it by how well-received she is. And so far from what I'm hearing, especially her Game of Thrones yep. popularity right now, the best bet is to be on Doctor Who too. Well... I, I I'm all for it. I really am, and I think it's going to be. Uh, I think it's going to be great. I like the fact that uh, Peter Capaldi reached out to Jenna Coleman and asked her to stay on for one more uh, season. I'm honestly hoping this is the last season with Capaldi, though. I I want know. Ron Weasley next. Really? Ron Weasley. It, there's a movie sure. called There's a There's a movie called Wild Things. Yes. Have you seen that? Great movie. Okay. Um, he showcases his acting his comedic acting and his comedic timing, I think he'd be like a mix of Matt Smith and uh, David Tennant. <laughs> and finally, we get a ginger. <laughs> no. no. But Doctor Who himself, it, every, like how many times he's come, I wanted to be a ginger. <laughs> you know, so... Yeah, so I, I would like to see that. I'd like to see a, a, a really young doctor too as well. I don't know if he'd be younger than Matt Smith or not, but mm-hmm. it'd be pretty close. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I want to see. Um, send your hate mail to wellandwingnut at gmail.com. I'm still waiting, everybody. He's still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, what else you got there for us, Steve? Well, uh, we have something something good coming Halloween night on Stars Network. <sighs> what is it? Groovy. Groovy. <laughs> this is my boomstick. I, the only I, thing I didn't like about the trailer is he didn't work at that smart. Yeah, where's it? What did he, did he, did he could have been retired. Is Putting there, the is there going to be a backstory? Are we going to get the final how he got fired from Smart? Or did Smart just get destroyed the last time that demon? I'm pretty sure yeah, Smart got, got destroyed terminated for killing people. Like they'll be like, <laughs> well, they were demons. Like, well, you still yeah, murdered people. You still murdered. He's grounds. being held accountable. That's the age <laughs> we're in, right? There we go. People were With offended. Girdle. So yeah, uh, I like the girdle too. Ash the girdle is great. Dead, I'm wearing one today for about. us being on TV. Um, Honestly, he looks fantastic. I can't even yep. stress that. I'm trying, I, trying to get into that girdle. I'm having yeah. That's, <laughs> I'm having a hard time though now um, because I've watched Burn Notice. I'm having a hard time distinguishing the two now. Yeah. Because it's almost the same character. Yep. Him and Sam, like Burn Notice, is a really it underrated a show. show. Really underrated great show. show. Um, thank you, Netflix. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, no, I'm excited about this. Definitely I, and excited it, about and this. It, and it really, it's reminiscent of Evil Dead 2 and Evil Dead 3. It's yeah, got that corny, campy, campy uh, yeah. yeah. Which uh, I, I keep it that way. Yeah, exactly. I think it's more fun that way. Um, and the box office revealed that with the last, the last one, right? The remake. Yeah. So, um, 
There's a couple other things. Uh, there's a new movie called American Ultra that's uh, being showcased at Comic Con. Um, a stoner movie with Kristen Stewart and Jesse Eisenberg. And if you go watch the screening of this movie, they give you your medical marijuana card and what? free weed. I kid you not. I didn't know we were hurting to get people in the seats this bad. Well, it is a Kristen Stewart movie. What's the last... You know, <clears throat> Rainer would shoot me if she... Her, her last movie she was in was uh, The Huntsman, yeah, which was a did, decent she did movie. She fantastic acting. She didn't talk. She just screamed and ran. Yeah. She she was... Her and you couldn't even, even You could even re- remember her in the movie, but the movie itself was a really good movie. I liked oh, it. I, I liked it, too. Yeah. Hemsworth. He was well, and beast. that's why the next movie, they're making yeah. a sequel without yeah. the director and without Kristen Stewart, and it's just The Huntsman. It's just it on be. him. Yeah. Like, I mean, you took Hemsworth, everyone's coming off his high of Thor, and like, ah, he's going to do okay, mediocre, and you watch film like, this is an amazing film. Why is she even in this? Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, so, yeah, that's that's a little weird that they're giving up free pot, but, hey, whatever. Um, <laughs> whatever gets people in the Maybe fantastic. We've only got. We've only got. Where, a, where is this again? Just so everybody knows. San Diego. Okay. Comic Con, yeah, where it's legal. Cheapflights.com. Cheapflights. <laughs> Hotels.com. Where's William Shatner when you need him? Um, okay, so uh, we've only got a, a few minutes left here. I want to get to a couple things here real quickly, if we can. Uh, Toronto. Applause to you, people of Toronto. Um, there was a dead raccoon on the yes, corner. I saw that. That was and awesome. uh, somebody tweeted, uh, City Hall said, there's a dead raccoon. Can someone please come pick this up? City Hall replied back, oh, yeah, uh, Animal Services said they'll be out there. Uh, an hour later, the same guy tweeted them back. He's still here. And uh, someone put flowers with the, the raccoon. Start building a memorial. And, uh, yeah, it, it, over the course of the night, they built this guy a full memorial, this <laughs> raccoon. Um, uh, the best was someone... Uh, Cosplayed as Star Lord <laughs> and yes. went over there and took a picture I didn't with him. See that one? Yeah, so so that was awesome. So uh, applause to you, uh, Toronto. Uh, applause to Canada. Applause to Welland Pan Am Games, first gold medal for Canada, women's kayak in Welland. Good job, folks. And it's not even regular kayaking. It was extreme kayaking. Those kids jumping off the bridge and they were dodging while kayaking. Yeah. Like, I, mean, I was going to say, were they point. surfing across a shelf full of Doritos? Because <laughs> that's extreme kayaking, right? A la uh, uh, Harold and Kumar. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, of course, uh, Wesley Snipes talking with Marvel again about Blade 4. I see positives. I, I love it. I think it's a great thing. Uh, Black don't crack, so he, he still looks great. And, and then, I could say that. This will be um, about Blade's uh, term in prison. Yeah. <laughs> Blade 4, getting out from tax evasion. <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> Dracula was nothing. The, <laughs> the IRS, totally different villain. Um, and they both then, suck. <laughs> Jeez. Wow, he, he, he went there. Um, two minutes left. Uh, Steve and I, one of our favorite shows, we finally got to get a bit of a glimpse and find out when it's coming back. The CW's The 100. Um, what a great show. And it's so underrated. Honestly, folks, for me, it's one of the top three shows on television. Is it better period. than Gotham? I know how much you love <sighs> Gotham. That's why I said it. Gotham, <laughs> the last three episodes of Gotham were really Absolutely, good. Absolutely, when it's all murder and people running. Like, it was, it the last three episodes were good. There was decent acting there was decent stories it wasn't the villain of the week supernatural had a hard time the first couple seasons because it was always the 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 monster of the week when they went away from the monster of the week and went to an actual storyline for the entire season so it was that's x-files it got, right that looks sick X-Files coming back. Don't forget that, folks. And, uh, yeah, that's basically it. I just want to say thanks to uh, Todd for coming in. Go check out Droids Canada. Um, thanks to my co-host, Steve Lambert, as usual. No thanks, to, thanks to Goldie and Wild Bunny Hair Photo Studios for coming out and doing the videos. The video will be up later. And with that, folks, I just want to say thanks. And uh, remember, you are listening to Rat G Radio right here on 103.7 FM, CFBU, Brock University Radio, or CFBU.ca. And with that, folks, we are out of here. You got to know, got the show, it's time to roll. So just tell me what you want to hear, tell me what you want to hear.